Global Drone Operations Manager at Hammer Missions. Uh, this afternoon's webinar, we will be looking at top 10 tips for drone photogrammetry. So, what is photogrammetry? Photogrammetry, in simpler terms, is the collection of precise measurements from user-generated photography. It involves taking a set of overlapping pictures of a structure, construction site, building, or any other object or environment you want to render, and converting those pictures into a 3D model using software specifically designed for this purpose. Photogrammetry can be used in various applications, such as architecture, construction, inspections, and surveys, to name but a few. So the fundamentals in this part of the presentation will look at the key elements to producing the best quality photogrammetry. These subjects will include data collection, which is photography, overlap, obliques, and processing software. So data collection or photography. The essential part of photogrammetry is the collection of high quality data. The quality of the photography will determine the output of your final rendered image. We'd recommend a camera with a high megapixel rating. The higher the rating, the better the quality of the photo, which will produce better quality data. For example, on the right there, we have the DJI P1, which is a 45 megapixel rated camera. So sensors matter. You'll see from the diagram there on the left that at 25 meters, a drone with a 100 megapixel camera will capture 280 pictures at a flight time of two hours and a GSD of 11 centimeters. So that's ground sampling data. Whereas a drone with a 42 megapixel camera at 10 meters, it'll take five hours to produce 733 pictures at only 0.13 centimeters. So overlap. Photos should be set up to overlap each other to keep consistency in the collection of data and to help match the photography sequentially when it comes to processing. This overlapping of photography is very important as it provides at least two to three views of the target object along the flight line. We'd recommend an overlap of 70 to 80% to make sure you're collecting the best quality data. So in this diagram here, you can see initially overlapping images. So those overlapping images will have key points that tie in to the overlap. And the software will be able to match those key points for your final render. So obliques. So generally photogrammetry or 3D modeling is collected from above in a grid pattern, but we'd recommend collecting additional data in the form of vertical capture, where for example, you would photograph the side of a building or structure to obtain more accurate data. Again, we'd recommend an overlap of 70 to 80% to keep the consistency and to match the nadir data collection or the top-down data collection. This is known as oblique capture and should be used in conjunction with your original, original method of data collection. So you can see here, nadir to oblique. So this is Canary Wharf in London. This is just to give you an example of oblique capture. So you'd capture the sides of the building as the top and then the sides. So that's just an example of capturing obliques. So software. Using a software solution will enable you to achieve high quality data collection by using predefined modules designed for both 3D mapping and vertical mapping to collect collectively produce a high quality final 3D render. So how do we collect the best quality data for photogrammetry? So with what we've already learned, how do we go about collecting the best data for photogrammetry? This is very much a personal preference, but for the best results, and we emphasize the best results, we'd highly recommend a combination of nadir capture, top-down capture, mixed with vertical capture for obtaining your obliques. So nadir plus oblique. Using a software platform gives you the tools to be able to combine both nadir capture and a form of vertical capture to make sure you're collecting the best data possible for photogrammetry. We'll now look at planning a mission using Hammer. So we'll go through 3D mapping, tower mapping, 
facade mapping and lateral capture. So I will come out of this for the time being. I'll move to Hammer Hub. And you can see here I've already got my uh, my mission set up. So 3D mapping is the mill, which we use quite a lot. So come over to our task, 3D modeling. We pop our polygon, press return. change our altitude over here and our camera type so we'll come down to Mavic 2 Pro set our altitude at <coughs> excuse me 100 feet which we can also do from here 100 so now 100 feet you can already see our front overlaps at 80% and our side overlap is at 80% Now, if we're in the field, we could go ahead and fly that mission and collect the data. As you can see, it does it in its grid format. And that would be data collected in the field. So next we'd have tower mapping to collect your obliques. So again, we're at the mill. So we'd come up here, add our task, tower mapping. As you can see here, click and mark the center of the tower, then press OK or enter. Well, in this case, it's not a tower, it's a building. So what we're gonna do, change our camera, Mavic 2 Pro. So you can see here you've got top altitude and bottom altitude. What we want to do on tower mission to capture obliques is to just do one single run or one single altitude. We don't want to go up and down the building. So we're going to go with our top altitude. of 80 feet, just for example. And our bottom altitude. Oops, excuse me. 78 feet. Now we you would need to tilt your gimbal. So previously I believe I've had it at about it was about 60 because you would need to capture the sides of the building and the gimbal will need to tilt down. So obviously we want to capture the whole building. So the object radius We'd want flight radius out so we cover the entirety of the building. And then we need to obviously cover our building. So our object radius will need to cover the entire building. There we go. So now what will happen is the drone will fly around the outside, capturing this data on the inside. And we can simulate that. That will only take 29 photos in a circle format. So now we can come on to facade mapping. So again, we've got our mill. Facade, you see, draw a line along the facade structure's edge, press OK to enter. Now you may have to do this several times. For this one, we will capture this back edge here, but you can obviously go back and capture the other edges if needs be. So we can do this edge here. Press enter. See, currently they're all facing inwards, so we would need to change or we'll change our camera. Uh, 
and we will rotate our points by 180 degrees so it's flying on the outside so top altitude put that at 100 put that at 80 feet Bot bottom altitude put it 33 feet overlap 75% and we'd probably want our gimbal tilted and we can fly our mission so there you go It will continue taking photos until it reaches its bottom altitude. As you can see here, its height will change until it gets down to the lowest altitude we set which I think was about 33 feet or around 32 feet and that's complete and last but not least is lateral capture draw lines along the structure's edge press OK Turn. Again, you can alter this from inside hammer. So put that at 80 feet. Currently, the gimbal tilt is set at 90 degrees. So once this has been um, planned within Hammer Hub. Uh, when you go and transfer that over to the Hammer app, uh, you can actually automatically set the gimbal to view the structure. Um, for the moment, I'll set this to 60 degrees. You can change that. You can also change the horizontal distance, which is the distance it will fly at to capture the imagery. And again, we want to set our overlap to at least between 70 and 80 percent I'll set that at 75 and then we can fly our mission again this is only an example of um, of what you can do there you go so that's your your missions, 3D mapping being your main one, tower mapping, facade and lateral is your oblique capture. And there's the live demo. So, 10 key considerations. So now we've looked at the best, me best methods of collecting data for photogrammetry, what key considerations do we have to take into account to make sure our data is of the highest quality? lighting. Your mapping area should be well lit as shadows, reflections and transparent objects can affect the way the software processes the final image. As you can see here from this picture on the right, you know, this huge shadow sat over Central Park. If you were to come to try and render this image in a, in a, in a mapping format, all of this data would be lost within this shadow. Might need your sunglasses for this one. Exposure. Try and avoid direct sunlight or times of the day where areas of your subject are exposed to bright sun. Ideally, the collection of data for photogrammetry should be shot in overcast conditions to mitigate overexposed sections of your final render. As you can see from that photo there, the exposure is set way too high. 
fixed focal lens. Use a fixed focal lens. Don't change the focal length or zoom while shooting, as this will cause discrepancies in the collection of data. You want to keep it fixed at all times, so it's just focused on the subject. Multiple angles. Try and take photos from all angles. Typically, photogrammetry is collected from the deer, top-down position. But here at Hammer Missions, we would recommend not only collecting data using our 3D mapping mission, but combining that with one of our vertical data collection missions to capture the obliques. As previously discussed, these can include facade, lateral and tower mapping, as we demoed a little while ago. So moving objects. Avoid moving objects in the mapping area or in the background, as these will cause artifacts in the final render. The mapping area should be static to obtain the best results. No point in shooting something that's, that's moving or has moving imagery in the background. It will, it will cause issues with your, uh, with your capture. Main subject. The structure, building or area you are mapping should always fill the main part of the image to ensure data collection is accurate and you're only collecting the subject that is required. That there is a, a church that's not that far away from me, which I've photographed many times. Overlap. So images should overlap. Uh, we'd recommend an overlap of 70 to 80 percent to keep the consistency for accurate data collection. As we previously discussed, overlap is very, very important. Uh, Hammer Mission's 3D mapping mission automatically gives you the, the option to set your overlaps. So your data collection for photogrammetry is accurate from the moment you take off. As you can see here in the picture and as previously demoed, um, you can set your overlaps from within Hammer Missions. Multiple images. Try not to take multiple images of the same spot. Using Hammer Missions will eliminate this as it's an automated process. Whereas taking pictures manually can sometimes generate very similar photos that can cause the render process to miscalculate where the shots are placed when it comes to processing. So you'll get images that sit on top of each other. Sometimes can make the picture look expanded or, or blow it out. It's best to use an automated process where your photos are automatically shot so you, can, uh, you don't have to worry about having uh, photos overlapping, multiple images overlapping. Flight speed and blur. Consider your optimal flight speed for the collection of data. Flying too fast can cause the images to blur, which will render discrepancies in your final results. Flying too slow will have an impact on your batteries and your time in the field. So you wanna find a nice balance between the two. The right amount of data. So, the more data you collect for photogrammetry, the better the quality of your processed image. You can always remove images, but you can't generate missing data. At the same time, too much data does mean longer upload and processing times. So again, balance is the key. So, that is all. Um, Thank you very much for uh, for being here. And um, if anyone has any questions, now is the time to ask them. Thanks again.